Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your love and goodness to us. And help us to remember this evening that you are here with us. Help us to remember that. And that every single one of us has a guardian angel with us. Isn't that wonderful? We're so thankful. We know it's going to be a wonderful evening because Jesus is here and our angels are here. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. All right. Are you guys excited? Yeah. I hear there's going to be a pretty exciting game at the end of the evening, so look forward to that. But until then, we've got some things we want to review and some things that we want to learn. All right. Where's my Nathaniel? There you go. All right. Okay. All right. This is the one. There was a couple of slides that I missed last night when I was sharing this with you guys. Um, Let's turn on the front lights. I think everyone will see better if we have the, this first row of lights. Okay, so we talked about the altar of sacrifice. And um, like I said today, it's a pretty good sized altar, pretty wide across. And you can see the people in the background there on the left, on the, your left, my right. Okay, that's right. Um, on your left, there's a lot of pictures in the background. And you see those pillars? That's the height of the actual sanctuary. And that's how it was. And then the altar, like I said, came up to about this time for me. Um, the one thing that I didn't get to share with you guys is this picture of the altar, kind of a cross section of it, and then the lamb that would have been prepared here on this side. Again, the pictures are a little bit darker than I would have liked, um, so that you can see how the lamb would have been brought to the sanctuary. And the person standing over here is our tour guide. You'll see him in a few other pictures that I will show today, or one other picture. And this is the picture I missed. Um, the labor or the wash basin, it's a little bit different than the one we have here because it has a place for the feet to be washed too. Do you guys see the base over there? It has a little bit of a, of a that's where it's one basin is standing inside of another one. So the hands up for the top, the bottom is for the feet. So that's what that looked like and it was a pretty good size one as well. Okay, well today we're going to be going inside of the sanctuary into the first room of the sanctuary and that's called the holy place. And there are three pieces of furniture there. I'm going to ask you guys to see if you can remember. What? Nope. You can cheat because it's on the board. Okay. The first one here in front of us with some things to eat on, on top is called what? The table of showbread. The table of showbread. That's right. I should have left the name of his name out, but I want you guys to know the names really well. Okay. The thing that lights up, what's that? Chan? Candlestick. The candlestick. That's right. It's seven branch candlestick. It's not five like we have here. And the last one is? The altar of incense. The altar of incense. All right. Let's raise our hands. Good job for those of you who rose, raise, your, raise your hands. Now, the interesting thing about these pieces of furniture. I'm going to leave it at this spot, so I'll just go ahead and set this down. Is that the first part outside was what we learned to come to Jesus and to give our lives to Him. We come and confess our sins at the altar, and then we are washed, as in baptism, in the, in the water of the labor. Well, these ones have some significance as well. The table of showbread, what do you think? That has to do with Jesus. Does anybody know? Yes. You're right. Jesus is the bread. That's what we want to talk about on the on the table of bread of uh, showbread. In fact, Jesus said that about himself in John chapter six, verse forty-eight and fifty-one. He said he was the bread of life. That's pretty neat. Well, are we supposed to eat him? That's kind of strange, isn't it? Well, Jesus, the people in Jesus' time, when he said that, they were kind of confused too. They thought, well, how do you eat a person? That doesn't work. But Jesus said something else um, about that. In Matthew 4, verse 4, and he said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So what do you think that means? What do you think it means to eat the bread of life? When we talk about words that come out of the mouth of God. Where do we find those? What do you think? Anybody have any idea? Gabriel? The Bible. That's right. So reading the Bible and studying it and getting to know the stories for ourselves and getting to know Jesus 
through the stories of the Bible, helps us to be able to have the bread of life. So that's pretty neat. Now, what about the candlestick? How does that have to do with Jesus? What do you think? Anybody have any ideas? Uh, let's see. Chan again? His eternal love. His eternal love. He said something about himself and light. Yes, he was the light of the world. Yes, that's right. He said he was the light of the world. In fact, it says that in John chapter 9, verse 5. He said that as long as he's in the world, he is the light of the world, and men would not have to walk in darkness. They wouldn't have to be selfish and uncaring anymore. They could be like him. In fact, he said something else about us. He said in Matthew 5, verse 14, that we are the light of the world. How can we be the light of the world? Do you guys have any idea? How about by, sh yes, can I? By sharing Jesus' love. That's right, by sharing Jesus' love. Good job. That's right. By being kind to others and being unselfish like Jesus was, we get to share him. And also when we share what he's done for us. Let's say that we were sick and we asked for help and Jesus helped us. Then we can share with other people, Jesus healed me. Or Jesus helped me to have, I had this problem and Jesus helped me out with that. Anytime we share is a testimony about what Jesus is like. And anytime we live like him, we are his witnesses. So we can be the light of the world, just like he is. But we can't do it by ourselves. He has to shine through us. In fact, do you remember what, the, what made the light to shine in the candlestick? Does anybody know? Yes. Oil. Oil, that's right. They didn't have candles like we have now. Maybe they did, but most of the time they would have this oil and they would put a wick in it and they would light that wick and that oil would provide the fuel for the candle, for the, for the thing to be lit. And what do you think the oil represents? Yes, God. Which person of God? There's a specific, because there's three people in, in, in the Godhead. Yes, who is it? Jesus? No, not by Jesus. There's God the Father, God the Son, which is Jesus, and there's one more person. Yes. God the Holy Spirit. Yes, good job. God the Holy Spirit is the oil. And when we go to Jesus and we pray and we spend time with him in the Word, we need to ask him, please, Jesus, give me the Holy Spirit. He promised. Jesus promised he'd give us the Holy Spirit so he could be with us forever and he can help to shine that light through us. Do you guys have learned this little light of mine? I'm going to let it shine. Well, that little light is Jesus and the Holy Spirit shining through us. And then there's one more piece of furniture, the altar of incense, right? And the altar of incense, what did we talk about? What was that, um, what would the priest do at the altar of incense? Let's see. Connor? He'd take that and put uh, incense in it. But what, yeah. what, was, what was the main thing that he did? at the altar. Chad, do you have an idea? He burned it and then the smell was good. Yeah, the smell was good. But what was he supposed to do? Yes. Pray for the people. That's right. Good job. You guys remember, he was supposed to pray for the people. If they needed forgiveness for sin or blessing or whatever they needed, the priest was there to pray for the people. And guess what? When Jesus rose up, from the dead and went back up to heaven, guess what he became for us? We kind of talked about it yesterday when we talked about the blue, because Jesus was, yes? Our priest. That's right, he is our priest and he prays in our behalf. Did you guys know that Jesus is up in heaven praying for us? That's pretty amazing, huh? So whenever you think that nobody cares, just know that Jesus is praying in front of God for you. Not because God doesn't love you and he needs to be convinced. He already loves you too. It's just that Satan goes over there and goes, you know, this child of yours was really naughty today. And he really should be punished. And this and this and this is what they did. And really, you shouldn't give this person any mercy. You know what Jesus says? It's true that this child of mine made the wrong choices. But you know... They ask for forgiveness, and I have shed my blood for this person. And God, would you please forgive them? So you, what do you think, Jesus, what God says to him? What do you think he says? He says, of course I will forgive them. So that's Jesus' job up in heaven. But you know what else? Jesus wants us to pray too, right? In fact, I'll read you a verse. 
that talks about that. It says, therefore, I exhort, or I'm asking you to, that first of all, that all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving it of thanks be made for all men. So actually, Jesus is asking us to pray for people too, and to pray for ourselves, so that God would help us. And so, that is the altar of incense. It reminds us about prayer. And so, I want you guys to remember that when the first part of this was about coming to Jesus and getting to know Him, but the second part, the holy place, helps us to get to grow in Jesus and become more like Him. First of all, by reading our Bibles, by sharing Him with others, and then also by praying. So can you guys remember that? Those are the three. So whenever you see those three pieces of sanctuary, they, God wants us to be faithful in that every day if we can. Praying, reading our Bibles and studying it so we can know Him better, and sharing Him with others. 